I want to give a big shout out to Neo Luna 22 for this suggestion. Let's jump into some unique weps. Are we are we ready for it, ladies and gentlemen? Some unique weps. Yep, we're tackling classic Fallout. That's Fallout 1 and 2. And we're looking at the unique weapons inside those games. We're going to do this starting with Fallout 1 and then going into Fallout 2. So the first unique weapon from Fallout 1 that we are looking at is the 223 pistol. And it's getting an S. Now in Fallout 2, the 223 pistol is no longer a unique gun. In Fallout 1, it's a one of a kind gun. It is a modified 223 rifle that's been cut down to a pistol. And you can obtain this weapon by helping Erwin in the hub. I've always enjoyed this gun. I thought the sound effects for it were always fantastic. It packs a lot of punch. It's, it looks great. And yeah, it's, it's always been like one of my favorites from the series. It's like a staple of the series, like that 223 pistol. I love it. Absolutely love it. Absolutely great gun. And that's why it's taken the S uh, rank here uh, when we uh, kick off the list. So S rank, thank you 223 pistol for everything you've done. The Alien Blaster. You're getting an S. The Alien Blaster is another weapon that in Fallout 1 it's a little more rare than it is in Fallout 2. You can find it in a couple of places in Fallout 2, but in Fallout 1 you only find it at the special encounter for the crashed alien spaceship. Of course you can also find the Velvet Elvis there, but you get this amazing weapon. Now it's incredibly powerful, it can usually one shot uh, pretty much most things that you're fighting with, at least two shot them, but it gets counteracted with the fact that it only has a 10 hex range. So. You're going to have to get a little more close, but this gun's going to do it for you. Now, in later games, the Alien Blaster had its own kind of ammo that was really hard to find and almost unobtainable sometimes. But in the first Fallout, it can take small energy cells. So that's something to look forward to. It's a great gun, S tier for sure, and a real staple of the series. The Red Rider LE BB Gun. You're going to see. You can find this unique variation of the BB Gun in the special encounter for Bob's pre-owned car mart, you can find it locked up in one of the chests in his place. The reason that this is still, well, you can also find one in a uh, dark waters general store as well, but the reason this is getting a C and maybe might be a little higher than uh, some of the other ones that cause more damage uh, is because I like the knockdown effect that the BB guns have and this unique one does it real well. You can knock, people down and just keep shooting them and it's it's really entertaining to do in combat i like the idea of bb guns being in fallout and this unique one is it's always great to have a real again a real staple of the series getting a c fallout one's turbo plasma rifle you're getting an a the turbo plasma rifle is an upgrade ver an upgraded version of the plasma rifle that's pretty self-explanatory it lowers the AP costs and just allows you to spam plasma rounds and it's a really it's a pretty good weapon I'm giving it an A because I don't usually this is a personal list This is a list based on just how I feel about these weapons personally, and I don't use it very often But you can obtain the turbo plasma rifle by speaking uh, with uh, Smitty After fixing the hydroponic uh, farms in Aditum, you know part of the boneyard uh, If you already have a plasma rifle on you, of course you bring it to Smitty and he'll upgrade it for you. It's a, it is a good gun. Uh, it's a it's a great weapon to have, and for that's for that reason, it's taken the A spot. Moving on to Fallout 2, Holy Hand Grenades. You are getting an S. The Holy Hand Grenades were one of two weapons I wasn't really able to get footage of for this video in Fallout 2, but you can find them in the special encounter with King Arthur. Of it's like a King Arthur special encounter. It's the Five Knights of the Brotherhood. And inside the cave that they're they're all fighting a rat inside that cave you're able to find uh, the holy hand grenades uh, these hand grenades do a lot more damage than you're used to about one to uh, 100 or 300 rather to 500 damage and uh, I, I believe they blow up similarly to a um, to a c4 explosive and you can throw them a lot further as well great weapons and yeah that's why they're taking the s tier they're again a great reference they're B, a really powerful weapon, and they're three, a uh, staple of the series, like always, so S rank for you, sir. The Improved Flamer, you get a D. The Improved Flamer is taking the D spot because yes, it is, you know, a more powerful version of the Flamer. It does cause a lot of damage. You, uh, I've found myself one-shotting people with the Improved Flamer, but this is not really my cup of tea. And uh, the other weapons on this list I enjoyed a lot more and have more uh, nostalgia with them, I guess, maybe, but... The improved flamer is kind of missable 
to me. You can find the improved flamer by getting it upgraded. You have to have the flamethrower, and then uh, you get it upgraded by having Algernon uh, upgrade it. And overall, uh, it's kind of worth the trouble. I mean, if you have a build that is going to be going for this gun, but other than that, I usually skip it. D-Rank for you. Johnny's BB gun. You are getting a C. You can find this weapon in the bottom of the well uh, in MODOK. It's pretty much the same thing as the BB gun that was before in Fallout 1. This one has Johnny scrawled on the side of it. But you can do a lot of those cool things, like uh, knock people down, stuff like that. So again, you're taking the C spot just like the other BB gun before you, and it's a fun gun to have. You know, check it out. Louisville Slugger, B. This is the other weapon that I wasn't able to get footage for, uh, much like the Holy Hand Grenades. I just couldn't get the quest to initiate. This, uh, this Louisville Slugger here in Fallout 2, the baseball bat, you uh, obtain it by telling the, the matriarch of the Wright family about her husband's stills under the railway station, and I, for the life of me, could not get it to trigger. But it is a good weapon. Um, I would say it's B tier, a nice melee weapon. I like the real world tie-in, I think that's cool. And it's, it's, it's neat. I've always thought it was a, actually a pretty cool weapon. So it, again, I wouldn't say it's necessarily a staple of the series like some of these other ones, but I do think it fits really well into the game and I've always enjoyed its inclusion. So B for you, sir. Plated boxing gloves, A. The plated boxing gloves can be found in the basement of the Shark Club in New Reno, and they pack quite the punch, no pun intended. Uh, you can knock people down very easily with these. They increase your damage a ton. You can even use them in a box fight. You sneak them into the boxing uh, challenges when you're trying to become the prize fighter in New Reno. Uh, a great, great weapon. I've always loved the inclusion of boxing gloves in Fallout 2, and having plated ones is hilarious to me, and it's amazing. And they, like I said, they pack quite a punch. A rank for you, sir. Solar Scorcher. A. The Solar Scorcher can be found inside Vault 13 during the encounter for the Guardian of Forever. It's a little portal, a little Guardian portal that shows up in the wasteland. You walk through the archway, and you end up in Vault 13 before the incident uh, that sparked Fallout 1. In fact, the Chosen One then messes with a computer and puts forth the events of Fallout 1 during this encounter. Inside the armory of Vault 13, on the floor, you can find the Solar Scorcher. Now, what's cool about the Solar Scorcher is that it has unlimited ammo, but you can only reload it when the sun is up. So, you know, you charge it in the sun. It's pretty powerful. It's pretty much a uh, amped up laser pistol, and you will see it cut many a people in half if you use it. Great weapon, staple of the series, A. Little Jesus. B. Uh, stop right there, criminal scum. I know what you're gonna say. Mantis, it's pronounced Little Jesus. I know that, but ever since I was a kid, I always called it Little Jesus. Now, Jesus Mordino, Little Jesus Mor Mo uh, Mordino, he will uh, have this gun, uh, this gun, this knife equipped on him. It's You're not able to steal it. So, one of, the, one of the ways that you can get it is by killing Jesus Mordino. Once you do that, you're free to go with this knife. It's a very powerful melee weapon. I love the design of it. The reason it's taking a B spot is because uh, there's just other ones that I thought were better, but this is hands down one of my favorite melee weapons in the entire series. B for you, sir. That's my list, and I'm sticking to it. Thank you guys for watching the video. If my list uh, is similar to yours, let me know. If it's completely opposite of yours, I like hearing about that too. You can always, for these tier list videos, find a list, or a link rather, to the list in the description below. But let's get into the shoutouts for the supporters. When it comes to these shoutouts, I've been asked by a couple of people when these get updated, I update these every Monday. So if you become a supporter and your name isn't immediately posted on here, just wait until the following Monday and then uh, you're good to go. That pre that prevents me from having to update it every single time I do a video and it kind of lumps them all by, you know, get updated every week. So here we go. For Patreons, we have Kim Jong-un, Fireflare, Mr. Fantastic, Clay395, Nero, Jay of the Jungle, Triumph, Just Just 55, Genetically Engineered Panda, Sorry Boy, Craniac Gaming, EMZT Radio, Bob Hunt, Hop and Sada, Villingham 21, Lisbeth, Squiggles 420, Nathaniel, and Skylar Masterson. For YouTube channel members, we have Red, Villingham 21, Just Just 55, Craniac Gaming, James Starkey, Your Meme Dealer D, Neometer Gaming, 
Mr. Fantastic, Cypriot Fox, Drunko Dingo, Shiny Espers, Keckley, Cadenza, Kim Jong Un, Samson Incorporated, Server Walls, Genetically Engineered Panda, Lisbeth, Bob Hunt, Skull and Suit, Sean Johnson, Combat Carl, Nero, Jay of the Jungle, Triumph, Matt Jordan, James Medor, Clay395, Corbin King, Kyle S, Nylet Incorporated, TKS Gimper, and Fire Flare. As for producers of the channel, we have Triumph, Just Just 55, Genetically Engineered Panda, Sorry Boy, and Red. For executive producers, we have Mr. Fantastic, Jay of the Jungle, Nero, and Clay395. Don't you dare, by the way, I was about to leave here without telling you, not to forget ever about the Hall of Fame homies. The Hall of Fame homies are Rainmaker Pimp, Clay395, Arc Pimp, Nero, Supreme Leader Pimp, Kim Jong-un, and Arc Moderator Pimp, Fire Flare. Thank you guys so much for the fucking support. You have no idea how much it means to me to be able to do this full time like I'm doing it now. I really appreciate you guys. I'll see you on the next one. It has been Mantis. Uh, I gotta testify. Come up in the spot looking extra fly. For the day you die, you gon' trust the sky. You gon' trust the sky, baby girl. Testify. Come up in the spot looking extra fly. For the day you die, yeah. you gon' trust the sky. Yeah.